The Maiden Voyage, The First Cook, The First Bread Test, and a fantastic recipe to suit the chopped cheese, the very first cook on the Halo 4 Burner Elite Griddle. You guys stay tuned. All right, so this video is gonna be very basic. Um, I traditionally like to break in my griddle with something like a cheese steak because all the fat in the ribeye, you put um, some oil down for the onions. Today we're switching up a little bit because I haven't done a chopped cheese in forever. And honestly, I've been craving it. We got those rolls from Philly. May not, may not be traditional, but neither am I, but they are fantastic. Got the cornmeal crust, they're soft, they're pillowy. I, I think it'd be a fantastic combination, okay? So got some ground beef. You got your standard accoupinets. A accoupinets. Um, Accompaniments. What's maybe it called? Accompaniments. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. If that's. I don't I, even know. I might have just. Is did that I use it wrong or I right? I think I used it right, but the wrong word. I love my dictionaries. All right. And then we have some onions, some tomato, optional, some jalapeno. I just thought it'd give us some great flavor. Ketchup, mayo, uh, American cheese. And we've done uh, the original traditional Harlem in the past. And I asked a question because it seemed like it didn't matter where you're from. The bodegas were different. The locations were different. Everybody had their own opinion of what seasoning actually went into the chopped cheese, which proves my point. It doesn't matter what I use, it's wrong. It doesn't matter what I use, it's gonna be right, wrong, indifferent. Everybody's got their own opinion. Traditionally, salt and pepper. And actually, this is uh, recommended a lot because it's got the pimento in there, the coriander, but I... I we not, do not like it. It's a. It's gotta be a taste that you grew up on. I'm not a fan of it. You like it, use it. We had some people were comment said they use this a lot. We taste it. I thought it was extremely salty, but you know what? They grew up on it. And then I have shake that. And I don't think shake that salty because it's not salt forward and it's just salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. And what sounds better than a good all purpose seasoning and a fantastic dish. First things up, we're gonna preheat the halo, but there's a thing that we gotta learn about this halo, okay? How low can it go? And you gotta do something specific to get there. It's not even on yet because I want you guys to see the whole process. I'm gonna raise the lid. I'm gonna keep the lid on now for the first few cooks because I would like to cook on it with the lid just to be able to demonstrate what it's like to cook with the lid. And then after I get comfortable and show a couple recipes, I'm gonna end up taking the lid off and use it like all the other griddles. We mentioned in the very first video of the review and seasoning that this has eight burners. There's four, but then they're separated in two. And then down here, we talked about this in the review. That is wide open. And then if you do that, that's a 9.5, and that's supposed to regulate the amount of propane that goes in there, okay? To do this bread test, since our whole idea is trying to hit low, then I'm gonna do everything I can to try to hit low. So we're only gonna turn on the four burners first, um, half the burners, because that's an option available, and we've got it set on low pressure, okay? So how low is low? That's the goal. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go about right there, which is low on the one burner, and see how low low is. All right, so after going back and forth, it doesn't look like it's probably the best idea to turn your knobs down. It looks like the only option you have is to turn it on uh, the single burner section because once you start messing with the knobs, it opens up the, the valve to allow the other one to come on. So it looks like you basically have on or off for the first set of uh, eyes. If you didn't follow the first video, I assume that the whole surface could be broken up into um, four categories, but eight, eight different variations, or I guess it'd be 12. What I was thinking was you could turn one on and or one off, one off, one on, and kind of do like a V pattern to really lower the temperature, but you could only turn on the low part or the front part of the griddle first. Then once you change the knob, it releases, it releases a valve and then the propane will go in the back. When you only turn on the front, you can only turn it on. There is no adjusting the temperatures. You might be able to get away with it a little bit, but we've been playing back and forth for like five minutes. And it's more about uh, basically just on or off. And then once you open it up to the second valve, that's when you can go to low, okay? But low on this, all four burners on, is extremely hot as well. So we're gonna skip that. So we're gonna try the, just the four burners, see how even the temperature is, and then put the bread on there. While that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the ingredients for a first cook. Now you might ask yourself, 
why would I make a hamburger just to be able to chop it up? If you look at the history of chopped cheeses, they've already got these made underneath the counters, frozen or refrigerated. Then they throw these on the griddle and then chop them up. So just to replicate and show a little bit of respect, that's how we're gonna do it. So about how many ounces would you say is each patty? Well, I've got seven patties, so maybe six ounces. Does that calculate? No, eight, yeah, about six ounces. 388, 395, 400. 388, 375, 365, and about 365. So I'm only showing about 20 degree difference. Just go front to back. The front side should be harder because that's where the heat's at. That's 400. And the back side is about 280 to 300. So it just goes to show you right there. I mean, I guess you could turn the burners off and play, you know, which burner you want on at the time to get to 300. But I don't think 300 is possible. You can actually see my griddle smoking, which means that the oil on there is actually seasoning right now, which means it's way above the smoke point. And I guarantee you my smoke point is three is a uh, 425 to about 450. I was told that I'm not laying the bread on there correctly, not to give a true reading. I was told that I should not do the heels. You know what? All it is is a visual, visual representation of what your griddle's doing without shooting a gun every time. I'm a visual learner, so stuff like this helps me learn the spots. We used to do big breakfasts with like pancakes and hash browns. Um, and you can see that as well. All right, it's not necessarily surprising. You can imagine if the smoke on the griddle is already happening, then it just goes to show you this griddle gets extremely hot. I don't, uh, I'm not necessarily worried about the unevenness part of the griddle because it's not a fair to say that the, the griddle cooks uneven um, because the back burners aren't on. That's just one of the options that it gives you. But it does go to show you whew, <laughs> that even you can score. I don't think it's possible to hit 300 at all. And it, uh, unless, you're, unless you're alternating burners. And I never felt like that's a fair deal because then all of a sudden you got so many combinations that you know, you're not just, it's not just a fair comparison. So maybe it's fair to say like for cooking scrambled eggs, things like that on this griddle that need to be cooked at a much lower temp. You yeah, have people, to... So the idea about this is people always ask me, well, why, why wouldn't you just adjust your burners? I learned to cook with the hot spots. I agree with all that. Look, it's not my first rodeo nor my first griddle. All the griddles we had before the Weber and Traeger were all uneven heat or they were even and just cooked hot, right? You learn to deal with it. You learn how to adjust your knobs, all that stuff. All I'm trying to do is show a visual representation of what the community is doing now in the griddle world. Weber has been able to come out and smash it with their low ability to cook on low. And it's the most even griddle that I've got. Traeger is not far behind it, but I just think it's more powerful of a griddle. So, you know, if you're asking me, depending on what day it is, you know, that's my opinion. Um, so when a griddle like this, it has so much uh, power behind it. Uh, when you look at all the, uh, the cool gadgets that it's quote unquote supposed to have, you look at people reaching out to you. This is the direct representation. They don't want to spend the thousand dollars on a griddle they don't like. So we do and we review it. And then this is the information we give and you do it with what you want to after from here. Okay. That's not for me to decide, but the bottom line is if you're going to cook on low, Oh, the idea of me staying low was the fact that I like the fact that if you turn your griddle on low and you can trust it about 320 to 340 degrees, then you throw your eggs down anywhere and it won't matter. Then if you want to crank up the temperature, crank up the temperature. 300 in the very back. 330, 350. And that's with those burners off. And the last thing you want to do is go over four to 500 degree heat just to make scrambled eggs. Let me show you. Cause I know right here is burning. I know right here is burning. Yeah, so you're 500 degrees on low. And, and you're only on four burners. I mean, four half burners. And that's, so the point of this was we were really trying to see how low can we actually cook on. With right. the idea of not alternating burners. Like, it's not like I want to do one burner on, one burner off. Right, so now what I do, I've alternated the burners. We're still at the low, uh, we still have it on the 9.5 under, and also the 9.5, 
it's supposed to be less gas. So, um, you're talking about the little button underneath yeah. on the propane tank. Yep. Yeah. So what we're doing now, I'm just going to take the bread off. We're going to start on that uh, cheese, uh, the, uh, chopped cheese, but I've just alternated the burners cause I'm interested as well. How low can we get this? Ooh. Um, and you can see, so this is off, this is on, this is off, this is on. We're gonna give it a minute to cool down, get this bread out of here and then uh, get the griddle cleaned up and start the, the recipe. All right, so a little update. We only have two of the eight burners on, only the two front ones, and I'm still pushing about 420 to 460, somewhere through there. I didn't tempt the back side of it because honestly, I'm not gonna worry about that. You know, your sweet spot's kind of like in here. So we're just gonna get on with the video. Like I said, there's a lot of uh, temperature combinations you can play with. Let that sit on there and get a good Maillard reaction on that bottom side first. I'm gonna throw some onions down, maybe behind the beef so that beef fat runs into it. Salt and pepper. Throw in some diced jalapenos. Toast that bun a little bit, a little butter. A nice crust. Now we start chopping. Once your beef is cooked through, lay that cheese on there. Move it over. Little mayonnaise. Little ketchup. Come back with a little lettuce, a little tomato. And no chopped cheese is complete without your deli paper. I'm gonna do this one right here exactly the same. Ooh, it looks perfect. Greasy. That bread absorbed, it's got the toasted butter, you got the seasonings you like. Try to resist that urge, let that bread absorb all that grease. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Same ingredients as a cheeseburger, but tastes nothing like a cheeseburger. It surprises you how good it is. And although, like you said, it's the same ingredients, it hits different. But that's why we make them. Learned a lot today from the Halo. It can flat out cook on high. So we'll see what happens. Keep it around, cook some stuff on it and see what happens from there. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook, where ironically we talk about griddles and Halo has been top of the mind for a lot of people. And I know there's been a lot of anticipation about this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends.